Hey, it's Chris. Today I'm gonna to be telling you what it's like to use an external monitor with an iPad Pro. But first, let me just explain to you how it works. So obviously, you're gonna connect your iPad to your external display. This is a studio display, and I just wanna demonstrate how long it takes to fire up once you get it connected, it's usually about a second or so. So in the past, when you hooked up an external monitor, it would mostly just mirror whatever was on your iPad. But now, you can see, I've got kind of a desktop background here, I've got the dock along the bottom, and if I open up Safari, it's nice and big, you can get multiple tabs going or even multiple windows. Over on the left here, you can see I've got some piles of grouped apps, so I can switch from Safari to Twitter, a couple Apple Notes and Apple Music. I can have these windows layered. I can move them around and rearrange them. I can make them bigger and smaller. Now right now to get this all working, I'm using the iPadOS 16.2 beta. And because it's in beta, that does mean that there still are a few bugs to get worked out. But the software component that's making this all work is Stage Manager. So Stage Manager is Apple's new way to let people resize windows and multitask. And some people like it, some people don't, but I like this, I can take three fingers and swipe between my app groups, that's really cool. I can also do a three finger swipe up and I can access my most recently used apps and app groups that way as well. So it is nice to be able to grab a corner of a window and just fully resize it however you'd like it to be. But I have to point out that two things are true at the same time here with Stage Manager and this external display setup. Number one, I really wish that Apple would let me resize windows and place them wherever I want and however I want them to be placed instead of sort of just arbitrarily picking where these are gonna be arranged and how they're gonna overlap, which I think is the number one gripe that most people have talked about so far that have tried this out. But then number two, I've actually been able to get some serious real work done with this setup. And not only that, I've even enjoyed it. And I would say that's even though some things here could use some further refinement. And I gotta say, using Stage Manager is definitely different, but it's really easy to switch between my different workflows and apps this way. And I've already started to adapt and learn how it works and kind of get used to the personality of this setup. And I'm not hating it. I see some flashes of brilliance here and it makes me really excited as an iPad fan that basically never thought I was gonna see something like this even be possible. All right, before we get to the only three things you really need to know about this setup, let me just say, you might wanna get yourself subscribed to our podcast and newsletter because the newsletter is gonna help you discover useful new apps and accessories that you never would have encountered otherwise and the podcast talks about life in the Apple ecosystem and I'm gonna link up both of them for you down below but let's get into the number one thing that you need to know here and that is that this setup has some really unique advantages. Now there's a couple different ways that you could arrange the hardware here, right? You could move your iPad off to the side and maybe get like an external keyboard and mouse setup going here and kind of use that as a separate display. That's cool, that's possible. Kind of more Mac-like in that way. Or something else that you could do is just lay your iPad on a stand in front of the monitor so you can really make use of your Apple Pencil. So if you're really into using your Apple Pencil, if that's the main way that you interact with your iPad, then this could be a cool setup. And then you might be like, well, yeah, but what do I do when I wanna type? Well, you can either use Scribble with your Apple Pencil, and that actually does work. Or the other thing that you can do is just use the on-screen keyboard, which probably isn't ideal, but it does work, again, if you're mostly Apple Pencil focused and you need to do some typing just to like load a website or something. Or finally, you could just rely on dictation and let your voice take care of all the heavy duty lifting when it comes to typing. Or you could just do the most obvious thing, which is mount this on the Magic Keyboard right in front of you. And this right here is what allows for some really interesting things to happen. So because the iPad Pro has Face ID, one of the best benefits is just being able to glance down anytime you want to enter a password or unlock something or make a purchase. And I also really like the ability to just reach down and rip the screen off. It's a little bit easier to write that way sometimes. And uh, whenever you're done, you can just put it back in place all while this monitor stays connected. It's pretty cool. So it's like maybe you just need to sign a contract real quick. Well, that makes it really easy to do. But then this enables some really interesting workflows. So for instance, let's say I'm going to do some writing or research. I can have Safari open. I can pull up my mind, my favorite uh, mind mapping app up on the top on the monitor and then down below on the iPad I can have Apple's new freeform app open and I've got a video coming out dedicated to explaining this new app to you but it's great to be able to mark things up and kind of start making some notes down here on the iPad screen and then move up top and actually do some outlining and do some writing and then 
there's the flexibility. And what I mean by that is, let's say I'm gonna edit some photos. I can open up Lightroom, for instance, up on the big display, and then I can use the trackpad and cursor to go ahead and make some edits, but I'm not limited to editing my photos that way. I can also click on the three dots up at the top and say, move to iPad, and then I can actually use my Apple Pencil and pinch and zoom and actually do some edits that way, which is a completely different way of doing things. Like if you're trying to mask something out, it's so much easier to draw it. You, it's a lot more refined, more accurate to do that if you're doing it by hand with an Apple Pencil than it is with a cursor. I will say though that one downside here is that you only have this one Thunderbolt. If you're really gonna do some heavy duty video or photo editing or CAD design and you have some external storage that you wanna hook up, then you're definitely gonna wanna make use of a powerful Thunderbolt hub or dock. And I'll link up one from OWC that I think is a really good solution down in the description for you. So I have found this to be a very productive setup, but one of the things that's made it so productive is that I can use one of my favorite AI writing assistants, Jasper, which not only writes copy for you, but it will also make AI generated images to go along with your copy as well. And when I'm using Jasper on my iPad, one of my favorite things to do is to use Scribble so I can say something like, write about the history of nitro coffee and hit compose and it will actually sit here and write several paragraphs about the history of nitro coffee, which is pretty powerful. So I love using it with my Apple Pencil. A crucial concept for people to understand here is that if you spend a lot of your life using an external display with a Mac, then you've developed certain expectations and you've gotten used to doing things a certain way. But let's say you're a student and you're not stuck in your Mac ways and this is what you've always used, this would be what was familiar to you. And you would think that using a Mac is what actually was the thing that felt weird. So I just gotta say, for everybody out there who's sort of poo-pooing this setup, which is a lot of different channels and reviewers and press outlets, I have to say, a lot of them are just turning mountains into molehills. Yeah, there are some improvements that could be made here, but let's not forget, this is brand new. It's not even out of beta yet. We had people requesting this from Apple, please give us external display support, and now it's here. And as soon as it arrives, you have this dog pile of people just saying it's terrible for this reason and that reason, and this isn't right, and fix this. But I'm just sitting over here like, this is really cool. I can plug my iPad into this external display and do multitasking with multiple windows and actually get real work done. Which leads me to thing number three, and that is that the future of iPad-based desk setups, I can't even believe I'm saying that because it's a new category, it's really cool. That future looks really bright, and a big part of that is because we've seen DaVinci Resolve will be coming to the iPad the full version of DaVinci Resolve, not some dumbed down version. It's gonna make full use of the M2 chip on your iPad Pro. This is a heavy hitting pro level app finally making its way to the iPad. And the reason I'm so excited about that is because I've sat here and said for years on this channel that I could do basically 95, 96% of my work on the iPad already. I've been saying that for a few years, except for this one thing, and that would be professional video editing. Now, LumaFusion was around, it was never quite good enough for me, but now that Blackmagic is bringing DaVinci Resolve to the iPad, I can probably say I can get 100% of my work done with an iPad-only setup now, which is kind of bonkers. So I gotta tell you, I think maybe we're a couple of years away from perfection here with this setup, but if you ask me, this is an excellent start. So thanks for hanging out today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me some comments with maybe particular things you'd like to see tested out or tried out, and I'll see if I can work that in. Also, we have some wallpapers you can download if you don't want your iPad looking the same as everybody else's out there. And don't forget to sign up for that podcast and newsletter. It's all linked up down in the description, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.